This 7 year old Mac Mini is the only modern Mac Mini to feature dedicated graphics. So should you buy one? You heard me right, just when you thought that it never happened, this Mac Mini does in fact include dedicated graphics. Isn't that cool? Alright, thank you guys so much for watching, as usual make sure to subscribe, don't forget to follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Wait, actually no, let's, I want to talk about it. Okay, so since you're probably pretty excited about a Mac Mini that has dedicated graphics, let's run through the specs. This is a mid-2011 Mac Mini. It's the middle tier with a 2.5GHz dual-core i5-2520M. Mine shipped with 4GB of RAM, but I bumped mine up to 8GB, and I also bumped my 500GB hard drive up to a Samsung 256GB solid-state drive. If you're interested in upgrading your Mac Mini as well, I put links to RAM and SSD that work with this model in the description. Now, the important part. This machine has AMD Radeon HD 6630M graphics with 256 megabytes of dedicated VRAM. Okay, so in case you're confused, let's run through the lineup of mid-2011 Mac Minis, because there were quite a few of them to choose from. So to start off, you had the base model that had the Core i5 taken straight from the early 2011 13-inch MacBook Pro, the 2.3 GHz i5. Then you can hop up to my model with a slightly better processor, as well as those dedicated graphics. You could also add a dual-core i7 to the DG model if you wanted to. Then you move up to what was deemed the Mac Mini server that took its quad-core 2 gigahertz i7 from the early 2011 15-inch MacBook Pro base model. This means, unfortunately, you cannot have both quad-core processors and dedicated graphics. Now I'm gonna stop you there, because I know what some of you are thinking. You're thinking, wait a minute, you idiot. The mid-2010 Mac Mini, the one right before this, had an NVIDIA GeForce 320M. That's dedicated graphics. What are you doing? No. Stop that. So the older Core 2 Duo Mac Minis, as well as the Core 2 Duo MacBook Pro 13s, also had what are basically integrated chipset graphics. Despite sounding like fancy dedicated graphics with names like NVIDIA. NVIDIA defines the 320M as well as the 9400M that preceded it on 2009 models as an integrated chipset graphics card for Core 2 Duo based laptops. So where these differ from traditional like Intel integrated graphics that you'll find on the Core i series, uh, instead of being integrated on the actual processor, these are integrated on the chipset instead. However, they are integrated. The RAM that they use is shared graphics memory. This means that rather than being dedicated VRAM, it takes a portion of the system's RAM. This is the same way that Intel integrated graphics work. This Mac Mini, however, has a Radeon 6630M with 256 megabytes of dedicated GDDR5 VRAM. Future Luke here. I just wanted to clarify a few things. For this video, I'm talking about modern Macs after the Intel transition. The original Mac Mini, which I made a video on earlier this year, had a PowerPC processor and ATI dedicated graphics. However, for the purposes of this video, seeing as that machine is almost 14 years old, is long outdated, and isn't even 64-bit, we're gonna set that aside and focus on modern Mac Minis. So now, let's talk about the performance of this machine. Despite being able to boast that it has the only dedicated graphics of any modern Mac Mini, it's really not a screamer. These graphics were never really meant for gaming, and they're also seven years old, so don't get your hopes up. The graphics don't fare too well in games and benchmarks. To give you a good idea of how this thing stacks up against other graphics offerings, I ran Unigen Heaven on a smattering of my local Macs. My 2016 MacBook Pro scores 464, my 5K iMac scores 689, meanwhile the Mac Mini scores just 35. Yep, 35. 
before you say, well, hey, wait a minute, those other things are new machines with much better graphics. Yeah, so I ran it on a 2013 MacBook Pro with integrated graphics and it scored 101. Oof. So these graphics aren't great, but they're not completely useless either. For lighter titles, ones that you might play on integrated graphics anyway, the 6630M can be a nice performance boost over the old HD 3000 graphics found on these older Sandy Bridge processors. Games like Minecraft or Portal benefit from that little bit of graphics help. For some real world testing, I fired up CSGO, Civ 5, Minecraft, and Portal 2 on the Mini to see how it would fare. CSGO wasn't what I would consider playable, since that's a game that really wants at least 60 FPS, which the Mac Mini was not able to provide at all. Civ 5, a game that is really playable even on lower frame rates, was just barely playable here. In initial gameplay, you can expect about 30 to 40 FPS on low settings, but once my empire got larger, I dropped down to about 15 to 20, as the CPU and GPU just could not keep up. Minecraft, perhaps expectedly, works like a charm, though you still have to turn the settings down to get that nice 60 FPS. Portal 2, on the other hand, was definitely playable on low settings, but it did have more stuttering than other games I tested. So clearly this is not a Mac Mini that's meant for serious gaming, but the i5 processor in this guy means that it's pretty fine for everyday tasks. In Cinebench, it scores an adequate 250 CB. It's not a particularly impressive score, but it is more than enough for a basic home computer that can be used for web browsing, streaming, and the like. Combine this with the slightly boosted graphics performance over the standard model, as well as a snappy SSD, and you've got yourself a pretty nice little home computer. The i5 here is even good enough that you can tackle some light photo retouching and perhaps some iMovie editing. In fact, if you are looking into getting into video editing or photo editing on the Mac, you might be interested in today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform with classes in areas such as filmmaking, photography, technology, and more. If you're looking to get into Photoshop or Final Cut Pro, definitely check out Skillshare to get started. And membership costs less than $10 a month, so it's really not very expensive. You can check out Skillshare with the link in the description below, and the first 500 people to click it and sign up will get a free two-month trial of Skillshare Premium. But back to the Mini. What I think this thing could actually be pretty useful as is a simple little HTPC. The graphics card might not help too much with gaming, but it is more than enough for streaming content. The only drawback about the HDMI output on this Mac Mini is that it only supports up to 1920 by 1200 resolution, something that's not going to be a problem if you have an HDTV, However, you won't be able to make use of a 4K monitor or television. On the other hand, the Thunderbolt port does support up to 2560 by 1440 resolution, so that option is there if you would like. But no 4K in any way. Not that it would really be able to do much at 4K anyway. So, the real question here is whether or not you should buy the only modern Mac Mini with dedicated graphics. I personally don't think they really add enough over just a normal integrated graphics Mac Mini that it makes sense. If the only reason you want to pick up this Mac Mini is because of those dedicated graphics, then you're probably going to be disappointed because they're really not that much better than integrated graphics, especially in more recent Mac Minis. Instead of buying this guy, I'd probably go for a mid-2012 Mac Mini with a quad-core processor, because those rival even the base model new Mac Mini today. If you compare Geekbench scores of the late 2012 and the late 2018 Mac Minis, you can see what I'm talking about. Look at this, 12,400 multi-core on the late 2012, 13,868 on the brand new, just released 2018 Mac Mini. So when you consider that there are six years between these devices and the scores are really, really quite close, not to mention the cost savings you'll get with this older model, it's definitely worth considering. It also has an identical design, the same upgradable RAM and storage, 
but is also still supported under Mac OS Mojave, which this thing is not. So that'll do it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. As usual, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Luke Miani, and please consider joining my subreddit, especially if you have any questions about this guy or buying used Macs in general. And with that, I will see you all in the next video. Thank you.